Welcome to Free Media, I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Ryan Grimm, reporter at Dropsite News. Glad to be here with Robbie. All right, so Robbie, after the attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump, many in the media are worried about political violence becoming a new normal. Over on MSNBC, Joy Reid recalled a time she felt unsafe because she was in the mere presence of guns. Let's watch. When men, because it's an open carry state, Ohio, were pacing in front of our position with long guns, with AR-15s, in a way to menace us, as we were in our outdoor positions, they felt that they needed to send a message to us visually with their firearms. And I think about the people who've tried to vote in Arizona when men with long guns were standing outside of those polling places to send them a message. Mm -hmm. You don't vote the right way, I'm here with this gun. And so the idea of political violence that we've been nursing really since then is so dangerous. Yeah. It's so dangerous that you cannot avoid the consequences of it, even if you're one of the people promoting it. No, that's right. And, and the, the political system collapses under the threat Absolutely. Of because that is the end of politics and the beginning just of the use of force. I don't know, Robbie. I do think the mere presence of assault weapons is meant to menace. Like there's a, there's a crime called menacing which is sort of that. I mean, it's been legalized in a lot of ways because of open carry laws and, and loose Supreme Court interpretations. But just from a subjective perspective, yeah, guns can kill you. Certainly they can, but I always come back to the fact that you know the vast majority of people who have these weapons, who own them, um, do so properly and don't and follow the law and don't do anything right. irresponsible with them. If you're marching with them outside of a polling place. Well, if you're marching or, out or at some event where Joy Re MSNBC is like setting up in some rural area and you got a bunch of armed people like marching around like yeah. they're, they're doing it they're doing it because they know it's going to create the effect that they're well, it, trying yeah, to create. Well, it I'm sure that happens some of the case it might have been the case in those, you know, I'd have to look at it more closely. Could be the case. Some people are I mean some people are arming themselves for reasons of legitimate self-defense sure. during protests and rallies that go crazy. Um, I don't think that and, and I do agree that we should be worried about political violence becoming some new norm in this country. What happened to Donald Trump the other day was terrifying. Um, it was an inch away from the former president, likely next president, being how killed. The, how do you get the guy's ear? Amazing. Yeah, right. I wouldn't have believed it. Po like, if right. that happened in a TV show, you'd say, that's not, I don't. Right, this ridiculous is, Take stuff. this out of the script. Yeah. It, it was a shot from a ways away. It, it was not a, my understanding of the distance means it was not a, like impossibly difficult shot, but also not a sure thing shot either. With the wind, yeah. And, yeah. and to, to hit him, graze him, not do any damage, again, that's a And he's moving miracle. around. If he hadn't been moving around. It's literally a miracle. It just is. And also, is. this is separate from what she's saying here, but it's somewhat related. The, the crowd there noticing the guy on the roof, I think actually saved him in, in this way, in that you got all these people yelling, guy with a gun on the roof, guy on the roof, hey cops, there's a guy on the roof with a gun. And then a cop actually did climb up and it's reported that the kid like sees him and points the rifle at him and the cop scampers right. down the ladder. Then the kid turns and immediately fires at Trump. That means he didn't have the amount of prep time that he may have wanted to squeeze off that shot. 100%. Which, if he'd had it, because with those scopes, have you ever looked through one of those scopes? I have not. It's, it's insane. You're like, the accuracy. you're 150 yards, he was about 150 yards away, less than that. You could, you could tell what kind of uh, knot he had on his tie with the scope at that distance. So when that kid was looking through that scope, like he could see every detail, and he's seeing this, like, it's a it's a very makeable shot. In other words, I wouldn't make it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but like, if you've got a cop now right behind you, and you've got people yelling at you, it's it's an even more difficult shot. So I think it, I think his crowd saved him. You know, on that subject of conversation, obviously it's still early, and we're losing we're learning a lot about the details of how the police and Secret Service were operating during this. And again, I don't want to judge this too early, but starting to like get shades of Uvalde in all this and the, the level of secrets. Incompetence? Yes. Yeah. I mean, to miss that roof and to, it, it, it seems unbelievable. So there, one of the reports that we've gotten now is that there were officers inside in the, building. the building. So we're gonna find out more about this and we may, we, who knows if we'll find the truth. But one theory to kick around, do you remember how hot it was that day? I just don't wanna be outside. Absolutely crushing heat. 
I bet that they're like, you know what? What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> It's the worst. Thing. Like, I'm just supposed to stand. Their here. little job is to consider yeah. the worst that could happen. Yeah. Right. But they're, yeah, but they're the local cops. Like they're not even the Secret Service, and their job is to stand here in the parking lot, you know, and make sure that nobody yeah. climbs up the building or whatever. And they're like nobody's climbing this building. It's it's like approaching 100 degrees. Like people were, people were like, at that rally. If you were watch, if you were following along beforehand, people were yelling medic constantly because all of these. Rally goers were just the passing hydrated. out from the sun. He was late getting started, as as all rallies always are. They were low on water, and so you can imagine, like, am I going to sit on this 110 degree asphalt when I could just go inside here, well, cool and it, off? And I, I bet that's I bet that's what they did. Another, they were supposed to be there, and they were like, "F it." Yeah, and another thing is how the, you know the bystanders pointed out the guy, and it it took like and we're always told right that you need to. Um, Speak up if you see something see suspicious. Something, say something. But then what happens time and time again in so many of these mass shooter situations, you find out that yes, people spoke up, that yeah. people flagged this person, that their relatives flagged this person. The Parkland shooter was reported to the mass killer over in that and over. was reported to every relevant authority up to and including the FBI, and no action was taken. Yeah. Like the people were pointing him out, and then it took a, a little bit longer, I th think, than it should have. To um, to identify him, so and, it's and even and maybe the, either they blew a protocol or they need to fix their protocols. If you have a whole bunch of people yelling, "There's a guy with a gun on the roof," your protocol has to be get shoot the, him. Get, get, <laughs> not even shoot him because let's let's say because the, the right, defense yeah. is like, yeah, oh, yeah, you don't want to shoot, right? But get the candidate down. Yes. Cover the candidate. Yes. You the the eeriest thing to me in those videos. As you can hear them yelling, "Officer, officer!" There's a guy on the roof with a gun. Is hearing Trump's voice in the background of those videos still going? It's like maybe they're wrong. Trump doesn't have any idea what he's saying. He can just start his start his riff <laughs> right over again. Like it's fine. It's fine. There's no. There's no. This is not like an Obama speech where you're gonna like ruin the arc that he's creating. The, yeah. This, and the moral telling an arc yeah. of the moral arc of our yeah, society. Yeah. It's, it's gonna be okay. You just tell them to get down. They'll fi sort this thing out, and then you get back to your speech once you've once you've sorted it out. But also, what I was just saying about the the scope and its and its uh, its accuracy and its ability to light things up. The other, the Secret Service counter sniper was 150 yards away, and. He could absolutely see. Oh yeah, well that's. Yeah. He, he could tell that it was a rifle. There's no, yeah. like, so at, at minimum, he he couldn't get approval for the shot. Okay, get the guy off stage, yeah. or get him down, get on top of him. That's your job. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, another your only job. Another actually. aspect of this uh, I wanted to cover is the kind of. Um, um, a lot of claims now from Republicans are, are using this moment to say that the overheated rhetoric of Democrats is responsible for it. Comparisons to Hitler. What are you supposed to do with Hitler? Are you supposed to take him out? And specifically to Biden about the bullseye comment. Now, I feel like, and you probably agree with me, that a lot of that is unfair, like totally unfair. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, and, and, you know, Republicans, I feel, were totally justified. I, I mean, I was with them. I wrote about the, this a lot at the time when Sarah Palin and her political action she, committee she got, won a lawsuit over got blamed. Yeah, it was totally unfair. The shooter in the, in the Gabby Giffords case had never seen that map, was not even a, he was just a weirdo. He was not discernibly conservative or Same Republican. Same with this kid, it looks like. Yeah. It very well could be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That would not be surprising at all. And Biden made that comment in a, like a donor call. That was reported yeah. in like the Wall Street Journal. This kid is like reading the Wall Street Journal, reading Biden saying, put a bullseye on Trump. He's like, oh yeah, Trump's gonna be here tomorrow. Yeah, it's, Let it's me go politics is sports. It's like, we, yes. you know, we're gonna, we're gonna utterly defeat them. We're gonna, yes. like that's, it's sports rhetoric as applied to politics. Could we all benefit from turning down some of the increasingly, incredibly polarizing language? I mean, I, I do politics? think we yes. need better and newer cliches. <laughs> like every generation ought to come up with New cliches. What, what are we on? What's a TikTok related cliche yeah, or something? Gotta ask, we're gonna gotta ask the kids. Yeah, we're gonna dead ass. We're gonna. It's giving whatever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's giving no longer the president. Not me. Yeah. Yeah, we're the wrong people. Yes, to ask. I'm not the one. But kids, come up with something. All right, more free media right after this.